stain in many different ways. But first, you have to know how to make the smear. Um, it's made in like a makeshift lab here, so um, there is no real flame. It's just a pretend flame. So when you really do this in the lab, you want to make sure that your loop gets nice and red, and I'll explain that in a second, and that you have it right over the flame. Here we don't really have a flame available, so um, I'll show you the steps involved if there were a flame. All right, let's start with, <clears throat> first thing you need is a little bit of water, and the water has to be sterile because if you have uh, any contaminants in the water, then that's what you're going to see instead of the actual um, bacteria you want to see. And <clears throat> you need some kind of culture. You can have a slant culture, an auger slant, or you can also have a broth culture, or in some cases you might be taking it off of a um, auger plate. First thing you need to do is you need to have a sterile dropper because it's sterile water. And in order to open these vials, you have to grab it by the pinky of your other hand and turn the tube and you can open it sterilely or aseptically. Take a sample of water and you only need a tiny, tiny bit. If you take very much water at all, it will take forever to dry. That'll be a problem. Then flame the tube before you close it so it stays sterile. And you're going to stop, just touch that dropper to the slide. And if there's too much water, and there usually is, you can suck up about half of it with that same dropper. Now this dropper, you're going to end up throwing it away because now it's not sterile anymore. The next thing you want to do is you want to get your bacteria into that water and spread it out. So you're going to take an inoculation loop, and <clears throat> this is made of metal. Sometimes you'll get plastic ones. The plastic ones are disposable and should be individually wrapped so that they are already sterile and you don't have to worry about the flame, and, uh, but don't try to heat up a plastic loop. All right. First thing you're going to do is you're going to hold the flame at um, not perpendicular to the table, but slightly angled so that the flame is reaching the loop right in the middle. And as you heat it, the flame will actually sterilize up to about here. And you'll see this whole thing turn red. <clears throat> flame it and it'll get red and you might even turn it just a little bit like this. Make sure that as you go this way your hand is going out away from the flame so that you're not burning yourself. And then you take it out and a good rule of thumb is say your ABCs. In that time you're letting this loop cool. If you go into the culture and it's too hot you're just going to basically fry your bacteria. And the bacteria will then look fried and not look the normal morphology or pattern that you would see. <clears throat> then you're going to open your culture. I haven't touched the tip to anything. We're going to flame it. You're going to go in with that loop that's been sterilized and just barely touch that culture. You don't need much at all. A lot of times you don't even have to be able to see it on the loop or maybe just slightly see it. Then you're going to heat it again, put this away. Now you have that bacteria on your loop. Remember which side you kind of put it on so that you uh, put that down on the slide. And then you touch the slide and spread it out as far as you can so that it's nice and um, uniformly spread. And then you're going to set that to dry for about mm, probably even two minutes. Some people have slide warmers. You can't take this as it's wet and put it over a flame because now again you're, you are basically frying your bacteria. 
and you're not going to be able to see what the morphology really is supposed to look like. So, once you have that, remember this had bacteria on it. Always remem remember to flame your loop before you put it down and make sure to put it on something other than plastic because the plastic is going to melt. And that, we've just made a bacterial smear for a agar slant. If you're going to do a bacterial um, smear of a broth, that's even simpler. All you do is you take a sterile pipette, open your tube aseptically, flame it for a couple of seconds, go in and get about a half a drop, flame, and then you're going to drip that onto your slide and take the pipette end and kind of spread it out as best you can. Don't go all the way to the ends of the slide. Just keep it about an inch and a half to two inches in the middle. And then you're going to set it down and wait a couple of minutes until it dries completely, just like we did for the auger slant. And that's a bacterial smear until it dries. Once it dries, it should have a very thin haze to it. It shouldn't be milky. If it's milky, it may be too many bacteria. You want a very thin layer of bacteria. Once it's dry, what you're going to do, take a clothespin, and that's going to be your holder for your slide so you don't burn yourself, and you're going to pass it about three times, like one, two, three, even like maybe five, one, two, three, four, five, and that's it. Now that's what's called heat fixing, and you fix the bacteria so that they're stuck on that slide. So when you look at them, they're not going to come off. And they've also been killed. And that's making a bacterial smear.